Good day, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albano Rhino Beer Review. The Rhino's here. We have a beer. This beer is... One second. There we go. There we go. Sorry. This beer is uh, from Lake of Bays. This is part of the Lake of Bays NHL Alumni Association collaboration. This is the newest one. This is the uh, Signature Series Imperial Golden Ale Cujo. So the Cujo Imperial Golden Ale, also Curtis Joseph, um, I can tell you that the lager was horrible. The, uh, the top shelf lager, horrible, horrible stuff. Um, what was it top shelf ale? I don't even remember. The top shelf bougie bullshit was horrible. I didn't get a chance to have the Vienna Wall, which was a Vienna lager. Um, this... I don't know how I feel it's going to be. I am. Uh, I don't have high hopes. Let's, let's just put it that way. After the first one that I had, I don't have high hopes for any of the others. But I might be. Uh, I might be blown away here. Brewed by Lake of Bays Brewing Company Limited in Baysville, Ontario, uh, in partnership with the NHL Alumni Association, hockey's greatest family. So, ingredients are water, malted barley, wheat, and hops. So, portions of this, it was a 11,000 bottle run. Where is that production? Oh, this might actually be the 11,000th run there. Best Buy, August 31st, 2014. Curtis Joseph, Cujo. Renowned for his lightning reflexes, and postseason prowess with St. Louis, Edmonton, and Toronto. The man in the rabid dog mask notched 48 wins, uh, sorry, 448 wins during his 22 year pro career, 1989 to 2010. An exemplary leader, fearsome opponent. Kuja went to the World Championships and World Cup in 1996, and in Salt Lake City in 2012 helped bring home the gold, Imperial Golden Ale. Uh, two row, whatever. Uh, he was on Off the Record recently, and he said that he had a say in this beer, and that say was that it was delicious. So, let's hope. Let's hope. I got the Merit Seuss glass out. I mean, it looks the part. It's uh, clear, it's very see-through, it's golden. A portion of proceeds support the activities of the ALN NHL Alumni Association. Yeah, looks the part. Looks the part. Nice golden color. Let's give her a sniff out. Hmm. Actually, it kind of smells like a, a pale ale. Um, a West Coast pale ale at that. Getting a nice cereal grainy weediness and a bunch of fruity hops. Uh, nothing spectacular, but it, it doesn't smell bad. Let's try it. Cheers, guys. Ooh. Okay, so my problem with Top Shelf was it was full-on bougie. It was full-on budget beer flavoring. This is not. Um, this is in your face. This actually does not remind me of... Oh, actually, you know what? I can't say it doesn't remind me of a golden ale because it does have golden ale characteristics. But it's reminding me a lot more of a pale ale than a golden ale. It actually kind of is like a mixture of the two. A hybrid of a Belgian pale ale at that. Very sweet. Very sweet. Um, hoppiness is there. It's a dirty, dirty bitterness. It's actually very grainy and very gritty bitterness on the background. <sighs> yeah. 
Yeah, the wheat the wheat is coming off in almost a bitter way. It's it's just grainy, gritty, bitter, mixed in with fruity bitter and uh, and earthy bitter. I'm getting oh, it's it's just this weird thing because. I really like the flavor I'm getting, but at the same time, I hate the flavor I'm getting. I'm getting just some some beautiful flavors on there, but they don't last long enough. They turn into this gritty, resiny finish that um, isn't normal for the style. Um, really sweet. Really fruity. Sweet and fruity. Beautiful, that way. Um, orange, some lemon, bit of apricot, bit of, bit of berry, um, raspberry, bit of raspberry, and then bang, into like chewing on a stick, um, very resiny, very, very piney, very earthy, very pill-like actually. Yeah, as soon as that, uh, as soon as that beautiful fruit sensation fades away, it's almost like you took a uh, took a Tylenol or an aspirin and you chewed it. You know how it just gives that, uh, when you chew it, that powdery chalkiness attacks all your taste buds, and it attacks it in a slightly painful way. Uh, not really painful, but you know what I mean. It just goes, and takes it all over, and you get this chalky, weird, gritty bitterness all over your mouth. That's what's happening at the end of this. So as a golden ale... No. As a Belgian pale ale, this could actually really work. Uh, too bitter for me. If the fruitiness lasted longer, if the fruitiness lasted all the way through and this was just the aftertaste, it would be great. But the fruitiness fades near the end, and then you're left with that gritty, sandy finish. And that's, that's what I don't like. So really... It was a it was a beer I came into not thinking I'd like it all. I actually like it quite a bit until the very end. Um, out of ten, I think I could give it a six seven five. I wouldn't buy it again because of the finish, but I could recommend people to try this, and I could drink it if somebody brought over a bottle of Cujo. So, Lake of Bay's Cujo, six point seven five out of ten. Not a bad beer at all. Not a golden ale though. Don't go into it thinking you're getting a golden ale because you're really not. It's too hoppy for a golden ale. And it's too much of that caffeine pill bitterness for me to like it. Thank you guys. Bye.